Welcome to Game Time. Chris Miles here with David Griffin, Brendan Haywood. Oh, man. My man. We got some drama to start tonight's show. The last time we saw the Celtics, Marcus Morris, Jalen Brown, they got into an argument. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Morris apparently upset about Brown's lack of defensive effort. Celtics lost by 16 to Miami. While well, Boston on the road in Orlando on Saturday night, uh -oh. more fireworks. You don't, you don't want the, the Morris boys always always looking to razzle dazzle. You don't want them problems. Well, it starts off well for Kyrie Irving coming through the paint, dripping. Oh, oh, come on, man. The, the, That's the, a the running, lefty left running hook. hook. Come on, Kyrie. Don't show it all to him. Dance. 24 points, six assists, five rebounds for Kyrie. And Celtics ahead by 11. That's what we thought, right? Then the fourth quarter comes and the Magic go on a run. Terrence Ross says, not so fast, my friend. We believe in Magic. 25 points for Ross. Then Aaron Gordon. Oh, you know when it's an open court, I mentioned his name, what's about to happen. Mm. 28 points, 12 rebounds for Air Gordon. And Evan Fournier with the outside game, 22-7 magic run. And yes, they have the lead. Jason Tatum. Oh my goodness, that move was Ooh. filthy, Jerry. Keep, keep this in mind, remember that possession for late in the game. We will. And in Kyrie Irving with the miss, Marcus Morris working hard around a basket. And we got a three-point game. Under 10 seconds remaining, Celtics down one. And Orlando almost gives the ball away. Game of benches. Four shoes and hand grenades. So after making the first free throw, Vucevic misses the second free throw. But watch this. Kyrie Irving in the huddle. Very vocal. Wonder what he's saying. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Last chance for the Celtics. Kyrie does not get the ball. It's Jason Tatum who gets it, and then let's see Kyrie. Not a happy camper, also vocal again. A Celtics lose the second straight, this one, 105-103. Now that final play, point of contention, clearly in the locker room after the game, there are multiple Celtics players. Yeah, I mean, I think he would have liked for me to uh, pass it to Al and have him cut off of it. Um, you know, it was late clock and uh, we've worked on that play before, and seen I've seen JT hit that in practice countless times. So I felt like it was it was a good shot. Bad dribble play, guys cutting uh, different ways, and thought it was a good look. Uh, I missed it. Some experience. It's the best thing I can say is experience. We're lacking it, and because of that, we have a lot of uh, learning to do. It doesn't matter who you're going against. It, it, it matters the type of preparation you have, what you're going out and uh, trying to accomplish. What's the big picture? What are we doing here? These are a lot of things that I don't think that um, some of my teammates have faced of just every single day. It's not easy to be great. So the things that you're doing, that you've done your whole entire career, of uh, being able to you know, kind of coast by in certain, certain certain situations and you've gotten away with your youth and stuff like that. Being on a championship ball club, you can't get away with that. There are two things we have to get to. There's the final play and then there's what Kyrie said. So let's start with the final play. Griff, why was Kyrie so upset? Well, and we're going to show it here in the video. I, I think both of us, when we saw the play unfolding, sort of expected one thing to happen. Uh, and here on the video, so the first thing you think you might see is Al Horford setting a back screen for Kyrie who would cut off and go to that green spot there on the court. The second thing you think you might see, and Gordon Hayward said this is what they were looking for, was Al Horford flashing, give the ball to Al, and then Kyrie's going to cut off of Al for a three-pointer there. They never got to any of that. And I think that's what Kyrie was upset about was Al is wide open and has the ability to run that handoff play that Gordon did refer to, and that's not what they went to. And what I think is interesting from the sound with Kyrie, Kyrie is essentially saying, we didn't have the experience to know to give me the ball. And I think he's right. Be really honest with you, I think he's right. These are the moments that you want Kyrie Irving for. He would absolutely get to a shot there. And th it's only a two-point game. So even if he doesn't get to an open, uncontested three, the guy's got more handles than a brew pub. 
he's going to get an open look. More hands than approval. I like that one. <laughs> but I, and I definitely agree with you. And then the thing you have to look at is when Kyrie's going to catch that ball on the move. His man is obviously going to be behind him. Al's going to give him the ball. He's going to have a chance to pull up for three or get downhill. And like you said, he has all the tricks, all the handles. He can do whatever. He can go all the way to the basket. He can shoot a floater, stop behind the back, step back, whatever. He can do anything. And in that situation, him not getting the ball, I just don't think sat well with him. He's a competitor. He feels like he's the man. He's the closer for this team. And that's part of um, what is wrong with the Celtics team. Roles are simply not clearly defined. Mm. Kyrie Irving is the closer. Well, guess what? When he wasn't there last year, who was the closer? Tatum, Jalen Brown. And some of that power dynamic, some of that power struggle is still evident when you watch the Boston Celtics. These roles need to be clearly defined by Brad Stevens. That's, he needs to go in there and start doing role definition every single day until these guys get it. Because until roles are clearly defined and everybody knows what their role is, they will continue to lose games like this to teams like the Orlando Magic that they have no business losing to. And poetically, Kyrie sounded how LeBron once sounded. Oh, like Cleveland. hey, Griff. Listening to Kyrie right there, did he not just sound like LeBron, LeBron's first year back in Cleveland when we were there? It was like the student became the teacher. Like, I can literally remember LeBron sitting there giving those exact same interviews and answering the questions in the exact same fashion about how young guys have to learn how to win. I love it, man. I love Snatch this pebble from my hand, grasshopper. Yes, man. <laughs> hey, hey, I love how, how the student has turned into the teacher. Well, Carl Anthony Towns is certainly the teacher these days, and he schooled the New Orleans Pelicans. Hear about his big night next. And then DeAndre Ayton, still a student, but looking great Ooh. against the top seed out west. That's up next. You're watching Game Time. Carl Anthony Towns, 27 rebounds, the most by an NBA player this season. 27 points to go along with that. Oh, yeah. And a stop on Anthony Davis in the final seconds of this one. Just an amazing performance from him. And he just seems aggressive. And this is what we, we thought we would get from him at the end of last season, beginning of this season. He's, he's certainly out of his shell. Yeah, he's, he's taken over as the leader that they wanted him to be. You heard during that broadcast that he's starting to lead some of the other young guys as well. And the, the rebounding performance stands out to me among the many things that's unique right now with this version of Carl Anthony Towns. I agree with you totally. He's having a great he's, – he's doing great from a rebounding standpoint and from a scoring standpoint, and he's now the leader. Um, I think that trade kind of worked out for both teams. Philly needed somebody like Jimmy Butler to score on the perimeter. And Minnesota kind of needed Jimmy Butler to be out of the way so that Carl could become who they envisioned him being because it was just never going to work with Jimmy there. And that's not a knock on Jimmy. It was just he was in the way of the growth of Carl Anthony Towns. We're seeing him play a lot better basketball right now. And certainly even for Andrew Wiggins, who took 21 shots, he was just 7 for 21, but down the stretch, he looked more confident and comfortable with the ball in his hands. Well, I think for Andrew, it comes down to, once again, he had to adjust to being the third option when Jimmy Butler was there. Now that Jimmy's not there, uh, Tibbs is no longer there, I think he feels a certain level of freedom. He now knows that he has uh, more range and he has more opportunity because he's now the true number two option. So his role is more clearly defined as it was a couple years ago. When you're the third option, that's tough. You have to be uh, the most selfless person, and sometimes that doesn't always work out. So I think Wiggins is more comfortable in the number two role. And I think um, Ryan Saunders will probably be a, a – a more mild-mannered coach, and I think that'll work well with Wiggins' personality. Well, I think you saw their, their second-best player today might have been their bench as a whole. They outscored the Pelicans 36-7 to off the bench. And with Miritich now playing just his second game back after missing 16 games and Peyton finding form, trying to find form after missing 31 games, he's only in his sixth game. It's unfortunate in the Western Conference that you say this because it's such an unforgiving conference. But they're now three games back in the last column of a playoff spot, and this New Orleans team doesn't really have the time to find a rhythm. They need to just hit the ground running right now, and it, it's hurting them. When you look at the situation in New Orleans, a lot of times the conversation is, oh, Anthony Davis, well, he needs to do a little bit more. But when you look at that bench, they only have two guys 
that scored off that New Orleans Pelicans bench. You can't expect to win games, especially if you're trying to make a playoff push. Like the Pelicans and the Timberwolves are two teams in that playoff picture. But if you're not getting bench production, that's that's going to be tough, right? Yeah, how many people scored off the bench? Two. And they got 13 points total. It was nine from Meritich and four from Darius Miller. I'm sorry, three players. Frank Jackson also with four. Wow. Yeah, you know, so three players. It's going to be really hard to score with that level of bench with that level of bench production because you sometimes need a little bit of pop off your bench, just something that can give your starters a little bit of a blow, or when you go to your bench can can lift your team up. Uh, when your bench is struggling like that, that's not a good sign. Well, what you really see that they lack. Anthony Davis had five fouls late in this game. And there was a situation where it's a three-point game. Carl Anthony Towns gets the ball on the left wing and just rips and goes right by Miritich. Well, that needs to be Anthony Davis guarding him, but he's got five fouls. They don't have another defensive big that they can put into a game to do anything to stem the tide against a guy like Carl Anthony Towns. They just don't have the depth of size right now for a lot of different reasons, and it showed tonight again. Yeah, that's certainly an issue that New Orleans clearly has. And then flipping back over to Minnesota and looking where they're headed, Ryan Saunders, now 2-1 and one, as the head coach there. That's a situation where this time last week was like, okay, they made a change. It seems as if this team, win or lose, they're headed in the right direction as far as where their mindset is. Well, I think sometimes it's about is everybody on the same page? And fair or foul, I don't think a lot of the younger players are on the same page with Coach Tibbs. And so if you realize that and your management going forward, then you have to get somebody in there that relates to those younger guys, can convey the message that you want conveyed from the up, from upper management standpoint, and then we can move forward with that plan. And I think Ryan Saunders fits that mold. And you can tell they're buying into it. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, great to see Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Davis go at it. Press, the official card of the NBA. DeMar DeRozan, your leading scorer in the first half between the Spurs and the Thunder. 12 points for him. San Antonio with a nine-point lead at the break. Welcome to the American Express Halftime Court. Chris Miles here with Brendan Haywood, David Griffin. Let's get right into it. Bryn Forbes, 0 for 6 from downtown, but the rest of the Spurs, 6 for 11, knocking out those open shots. And how are they getting them? Well, for the most part, and we'll see here in the video, they're moving bodies and ball in a way that a lot of teams don't. You're seeing a lot of teams focus everything they do on isolation and pick and roll. And in this situation, it's a dribble handoff from LaMarcus Aldridge. Dave Davies Bertans is able to get separation here, step out because the defense is so keenly aware of LaMarcus Aldridge. And Ferguson's just late on the rotation. Davis is so big, he's gonna shoot over the top even if a, even if a defender is there. And here they're just moving the ball. They continue to move it until they find the open play. Four passes in. Five passes, one relocation dribble, and Davis is wide open. And again, they're moving bodies and ball. The ball is moving from strong to weak, and OKC has not dealt with that very well. And here, when they do deal with it well, Davis has it rolling pretty well. And when you're 6'10", and you can get the ball over the top of almost any contest, if you allow him to get going, it's going to be a long night. You definitely don't want to allow him to get going. And it's just not hasn't been just him, the whole Spurs bench. The Spurs bench has been great. They've chipped in points. Uh, Bert, Bertans, Bellinelli, all those guys have gotten active and gotten involved and have really given uh, the Spurs an advantage. Here you see Bertans is simply coming off for that screen right there, hitting that three. Now Patty with the great pass. Bellinelli comes in, king of the off-balance shots, a nice little runner right there. Now we have Pau Gasol. He misses, but guess what? The bench is there to help him have his back again. Bertans with a nice follow. Patty Mills, another nice layup. So this bench where the Spurs has been very active is giving them a lot. Um, the starters have been pretty good, but the bench is what's separated them in this game and the fact that for o OKC, Paul George and uh, Russell Westbrook have really struggled from the field. And yeah. doing all of this, by the way, on the bench without Rudy Gay tonight as well. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned Paul George, Russell Westbrook, just four for 19 so far from the field. Why can't they find their shot? Well, I think as opposed to the way San Antonio is playing, movie bo moving bodies and ball, OKC has really stagnated what they're doing. You see there, Paul takes a contested two. The ball stays on the same side of the floor that the offense is initiated on. Again, Russell misses a contested layup. That's a shot he typically makes. But look at how many of these shots in this package where the ball is shot from the same side of the floor it was initiated on. None of those clips we showed you of San Antonio's offense involved that. It's a completely different approach to the offense. They're relying very much on two guys 
to create everything for them, whereas San Antonio is going to the concept that the ball finds energy and Popovich has made an incumbent upon everybody to just play totally unselfish. When you see OKC's two stars struggling, you think, okay, well, they're still in this game because you have a guy, Adlo Nader, eight minutes, ten points, no misses, Brendan. Well, he's been very effective, and you see right here, there's a nice drive right there and taking it to the basket very strong. Once again, a quick crossover and floating with the offhand. So he's been very aggressive, and he's maximized his opportunity. When you're a young player in this league and you're trying to find yourself another great high arcing shot off the, off the backboard, and you're trying to find yourself in this league and you're trying to find your position, when there's a night when your team needs you, when your stars aren't playing well, and they give you an opportunity, you have to walk through that door and take advantage of that opportunity. That's exactly what Abdul Nader has done. And they've needed every, all 10 of those points that he scored. They needed that to even be in this game right now. I love this, Max up because it styles make a fight these two teams couldn't be any more different so many different ways OKC's dead last in the NBA of number of passes over the course of the season and San Antonio is just a work of art right now when they move the ball certainly we'll see if uh, OKC can get it going with Paul George and Russell Westbrook in the second half when we come back we're going to take a look around the league Adam Nader continues to shine for the Thunder that was a nice game.